hi everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today for subscribing for commenting on my videos for liking my videos thank you for your support if it's your first time welcome to my channel my name is Daphne please make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed and click the notifications bell so you get notifications of videos that will be posted on this channel so welcome to wisdom Wednesdays we're back again and just before we begin I just want to make a quick FYI concerning uh, the book that will be out on the 3rd of August the art of being private I recently changed the book cover so for you who have purchased the book thank you so much uh, but the book cover will officially be this book cover um, yeah so thank you so much and let's go straight into the word let's go to the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 31 to 34 and also verse 60 to 62 amen and the Lord said Simon Simon indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren but he said to him Lord I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death then he said I tell you Peter the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me verse 60 but Peter said Man, I do not know what you're saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Hallelujah. So many of you have been weeping bitterly in your hearts. You've been weeping, weeping bitterly. In your emotions weeping bitterly in your actions your speech has turned into a speech of weeping bitterly because of the way that you've betrayed the Lord some of you have betrayed the Lord you feel ashamed you feel guilty you feel that I used to be like this I used to pray I used to be a prayer warrior now I'm so lukewarm now I'm fulfilling the, the sins of the flesh now I'm doing this and that I never used to be this way I never used to lie like this now I've become a fornicator now I've become a cursor now I do things that do not please God are you like this today the Lord wants to speak to you today are you somebody that is in a process of drawing back maybe you're in the process of drawing back because your flesh has taken over your situation taken over your life are you in the process of you're trying to get back to God but you seem to feel guilty guilt has made you a prisoner in your thoughts guilt and shame and fear has taken over your life and you just don't know how you can get back into the true vine the Lord wants to speak to you even as he spoke to Peter amen so here we see Peter Peter loved God Peter loved the Lord Jesus Christ you see it's not about how much you love the Lord Jesus Christ how much you care about him how much you follow his word but there comes a time when Satan is watching your life you see Satan studies your life Satan is studying you what time you wake up what time you sleep what do you do in the day what are the things that make you fearful what are the things that make you smile what are the things that make you laugh what are those things that bring you joy what are those things that annoy you what are the things that bring you stress Satan began to study the life of Peter every time that the Lord would call Peter every time that the Lord would say Peter I need you to do this and that Peter I need you to go up at the mountain with me with the two other disciples you see there was something about Peter not only was he the oldest of the disciples I believe he was the oldest but there was also responsibility upon his life there was a responsibility that the Lord Jesus Christ had put and placed on the shoulders of Peter there was a destiny that Peter had to fulfill a destiny that is bright a future that is bright there was a mandate that affects generations that was upon Peter's shoulder and so the enemy began to study Peter you see you have to understand who you are you have to know who you are you have to let the Lord Jesus Christ teach you who you are as you go into the word as you walk this life and this narrow path it's very important that you study your future study your present study your past study yourself in Christ so that when the enemy is studying you at least you know who you are before he deceives you before he puts you in a place of guilt and shame and the Lord Jesus Christ he loves you and I he loves you so much I want you to know that the Lord loves you so much 
And right now, so many of you, maybe you don't understand this, but the Lord is still praying for us. He's still interceding for us. The Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father right now and he's interceding for the body of Christ, interceding for his bride. The ministry of intercession has not stopped. He's still interceding for you and I and he knows the things that Satan wants to do concerning your life. The Lord Jesus Christ began to let Peter know about a secret that is taking place in the spiritual realm, about a loophole that has opened in the spiritual realm, about the plans of Satan, of corruption, of condemnation, of destruction. The Lord Jesus Christ began to tell Peter, Simon, Simon. You see, Simon had been renamed to Peter. The Lord Jesus Christ had renamed his name Peter, but now he's saying, Simon, the unregenerated part of you, the fleshly part of you, the weak nature of you, Satan has asked for it, that he may sift all of you like wheat. Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is not like humans. You know, some of you, you've had friends that have failed you and you have stopped being friends. Some of you had parents that have failed you and you've stopped speaking to your parents. You have had bosses that have failed you and now you hate the boss. There's tension in the workplace, tension with your colleagues, tension with your friends, tension with your family. But the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us something here. Let's look beyond the flesh. You see, Peter, I'm looking beyond your failures of the flesh because your flesh is going to fail me. You see, only I am good because I am God. Only God is good. Your flesh, your flesh is fallible. Your flesh will fail. But Peter, I have prayed for you because you are a man of faith. That your faith will not fail you because we are living by faith. We are a people who live by faith for the just shall live by faith. The Lord Jesus Christ is not looking at your flaws. He doesn't look at your shortcomings. Of course, he wants you to be stronger, stronger, more edified, taller and taller than the giant like Goliath. He wants you to be bigger and bigger than the mountains that you face in your daily seasons, in the seasons of trials and temptations. He wants you to grow. He wants you to be edified. He's looking at the future. He's looking at the future of the gen. He's looking at the generation of the Jews. He's looking at the Peter whose shadow heals people. He's looking at the Peter who stands boldly. The same Peter who goes into prison and he's being beaten up. But he stands up boldly and he says, we will not stop speaking of this name. This is the Peter that is speaking to you. Child of God, the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to you. You said, I have, I have a baby out of wedlock. I fell into temptation. I committed fornication. And now I have a child. The father is no way to be seen. Maybe you're saying this and you're full of guilt today. Full of shame because people look at you in a different way. Are you full of guilt, full of self-condemnation? I want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven you. If you choose to change your ways, choose to leave the thoughts of condemnation, the thoughts of guilt, the thoughts of shame, there's a future ahead of you. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to see the future. He wants you to be who you are. He has called you to be more than a conqueror. You are the head and not the tail. You are above situations, above guilt and shame, above temptations and weaknesses. He wants you to walk like the victor that you are. He says, Peter, I have prayed for you. Peter, I have prayed for you. You're no longer the Simon. I have prayed for your future. Though your weaknesses, you have a weakness of lying. Lying is a weakness that you have and Satan wants to use that weakness to trap you, to trap your faith and to kill your faith. You see, Satan's goal is to trap you, is to still kill and destroy your faith. The reason why you're facing all these challenges of guilt, of shame, of self-condemnation, you feel unworthy, unworthy to stand in the front, unworthy to sing before the king, you are in the choir, you are in the worship team. Now you feel unworthy because of what you have done. The enemy keeps reminding you, you did this, you're not worthy of standing. Ask yourself, are these thoughts from God? Are these thoughts of the Holy Spirit? Or are these thoughts of self-condemnation? Begin to assess these thoughts that keep crippling your mind with fear. Are these thoughts from the throne of God? Do you think the Lord Jesus Christ will tell you that you are not worthy? Yet he died for you. You are worthy of the blood. Do you understand the price of the blood? 
Do you understand the power of the blood? Do you understand the forgiveness of sins? Do you understand what he has done for you on the cross? Do you keep looking back at the sins that he already died for? Lord Jesus Christ, I, I did this and I, 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 I don't know if I can come back to you. I don't know if I can come back into your presence. I feel unworthy. I don't feel like I am enough. And so many of you begin to be deceived and you're doing things. You're doing so many works, so many things. Your speech is a speech of works. Your behavior is a behavior of works in the presence of God. You want him to prove his love for you, but yet he has demonstrated his love for you through Jesus Christ. Through the work of the cross, he has given you everything. There's nothing more that he can give you. You have everything in him. Everything that you have, you have everything in him. Why do you try to earn the things that you have been freely given? Why are you still trying to earn his love, earn his favor? Yet he loves you with a love that cannot be unquenched. Yet he has died for you and he has demonstrated that love. Yet he has given you all things in him. You don't need to beg anymore for his love. His love is evidently. He loves you, child of God. Why do you keep begging for his love? Why do you keep begging for him to prove that he loves you? He has already proved that he loves you. Open your eyes and see. Look all around you. His love covers you like a shield. Look all around you. There are angelic beings waiting to minister to you. But because you're in this cage of guilt, you can't even praise him. You can't even pray to him. The enemy has put you in a cage, but I want you to know today that you can praise him again. You can smile again today. You can go in his presence with boldness without shame anymore, child of God, because the enemy has lost. He lost on the cross. He lost the battle. Don't let his deceptions and his lies take over you. The word of God was spoken to Peter. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you have returned to me, this is a prophetic word. When you have returned to me, a prophetic word that comes with instruction, strengthen your brethren. When you have returned to me from fornication, when you have returned to me from that porn addiction, when you have returned to me from the lies, when you have returned to me and your faith has not failed you, strengthen those that are weak in the same area. Strengthen those that are on their knees and they are begging for Christ to show them that he loves them, yet he already loves them. Strengthen those that are facing the same troubles and tribulations that you used to face. Do not be silent. Do not be quiet. I need you to go out and strengthen others. Do not be ashamed of your testimony. Do not be ashamed of the scars because those are wounds that I have healed because your faith will not fail. I have prayed for you, Peter. Some of you are so ashamed to tell people where you came from. You know that you have been delivered. Your life has been transformed. Your faith has not failed you. But yet you remain quiet. Why are you quiet? There's a thousand other people that are facing the same trial and they need a voice of reckon. They need a voice of strength. They need a voice of courage. They need a voice that can inject boldness like lions that they may jump up and get up and start to walk their race, run their race, crawl in their path to their destiny. Do not be silent. Show your scars. Strengthen others and say, hey, these are my scars. I have walked through those same challenges. These are my scars. I walked through that fire and I came out. Look at me. I will tell you and I will show you how I overcame. You see, you overcome by the word of your testimony. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb without blemish. You overcome by receiving His forgiveness. You overcome by receiving His love. It's not about works. It's about grace. Do you believe in the grace of the Lord? Do you believe that He can change your life if you're willing? To let go of the shame. If you're willing to fight the thoughts of doubt and unbelief, if you're willing to fight the thoughts of self-condemnation and guilt, do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ can make you like Peter whose shadow used to heal people? The Lord Jesus Christ spoke to Peter, but Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. You see, maybe you're like Peter, you're very zealous. You see that you're strong. You're looking at how strong you are. I, I've never failed him. I've walked for three years with him. How can he say that I'm going to fail him? 
How can he say that I'm going to deny him? This is absurd. How can I deny the one I've walked with for two years? I've gone up mountains with him. I've seen transfigurations. I've seen him heal the sick. I've seen miracle signs and wonders. People being fed. Thousands being fed. I have walked with him side to side. I've done everything that he has asked me. How can I now deny him? Maybe this is who you were maybe five years ago. But something happened. A temptation was orchestrated. A trap was orchestrated before you and you fell. And from that day, you keep condemning yourself. You fell so hard from that high place. You fell so hard and everybody saw you falling. Like Satan, he fell from heaven like lightning. You see, Satan wants you to fall and to be ashamed, just like he is a failure. He wants you to feel like he feels. Satan is a hater. He wants you to feel ashamed. He wants you to be a failure because he's a failure. He knows he has already lost the battles. So he tries to trap those that believe to make them feel that they have lost the battle. He tries to put his insecurities on you. He tries to put his limitations and his weaknesses on you. But you, child of God, you are not a loser. Satan is already lost. You are a winner in Christ. You are a victor in Christ. You are the head and not the tail. Satan is under your feet. His power is under your feet. All he can do is use deception and lies because he has no power. So he uses witchcraft, which is deception. He uses lies to trap people in their minds. He tries to capture your mind through lies and deception. But child of God, you are not a loser. You will never be a loser. You are victorious in Christ. I want you to know that you are victorious. You are strong. Some of you, you don't have anyone to tell you this. You're hanging around the wrong kind of people. Some of you, because you are hanging around these kind of people, you'll never know how victorious you are. You'll never get to that level that God wants you to get to. It's time to let go of people that are used by Satan. It's time to let go of people that speak down on you or talk down on you. Maybe it's a church. Maybe it's the leaders in the church. They keep talking down on you. They're not really preaching the gospel. They are preaching a gospel of condemnation, a gospel of works. Do this, do that. Do that and do this and you will gain the favor of the Lord. They keep condemning you. There is more pruning than there is watering in your church. Maybe it's time to leave. Maybe it's time to go somewhere where you're celebrated. Maybe it's time to go somewhere where people tell you who you are. People who see you like Christ sees you. People who don't condemn you. And exalt the doctrine of deception and lies in your life. It's time to let go of those environments, those people, and those situations. Because you are like Peter. There's a destiny. There's a generation waiting for you. There are people that you need to strengthen and you cannot afford to condense yourself and to box yourself in that environment that cripples your walk, cripples your hands, cripples your movement, your speech, your victorious way of thinking that cripples your faith. It's time to move on in this generation. We are about to enter the last half of the year and it's time to really assess your life because you have a destiny to fulfill. So Peter, He's trying to uh, use his logic here. He's trying to use his reasoning and he's trying to understand why would I even do this? You know, when the Lord warns you, take it very seriously. When the Lord is speaking to you about something and he's saying, hey, do this, do that. And he's saying, hey, don't hang around with this person. I don't want you to go there. I want you to think about this situation. I want you to wait. I want you to be still. Take it very seriously. The Lord Jesus Christ says, I tell you, Peter, and he begins to explain the prophetic word. He begins to reveal the time and the exact things that are about to take place. The Lord will explain the situation to you. Don't feel condemned in your heart. Don't try and prove a point to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't try and prove how great you are, how strong you are. Just humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord. Humble yourself under the instruction and the word that is being given. I tell you, Peter, and now it's Peter, it's no longer Simon. Peter is the one who has faith. Peter is the one whose shadows is going to heal people. Peter is the one who is victorious, the one who lives by faith and not by sight. Now he's addressing the spirit man because the physical, though the physical is going to fail, but the spirit man, that is going to prevail. Peter, Peter, The rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me. You see, tests can come and you can fail. 
tests can come and you can begin to cower in fear. And you begin to deny your power. You begin to deny God. You begin to deny the word that you led for 10 years. For 10 years, you were a good girl, as you say. I was a good girl for 10 years. But there are tests and trials and temptations that can come and cause you to deny the things that you have learned in those 10 years. But the Lord wants you to know today, I am still, I still love you. I still love you. I still have a plan for you. This is not the end. It's time to get up from the tears. Oh God. Some of you have cried pools of tears, rivers of tears. Your house has been flooded. When you look at your house in the spiritual realm, it has been flooded with tears. It's time to get up and to dry the tears in your house. It's time to vacuum out the liquids that hold no substance to your future. It's time to change your posture in the season. It's time to get up. It's time to leave the pity parties. Peter, while he was in the midst of denying, the midst of his weakness, while he was in the middle of being weak, whilst he was in the heat of the fire of denying the Lord Jesus Christ, while his weakness had taken over him. You see, Satan was laughing. Satan was saying, I got you this time. You see, Satan is not mindful of the things of God. He only has maybe an idea that, oh, there's a destiny, there's a bright future concerning Peter. There's a plan for Peter. I see that maybe something is going to happen. This is why he would kill children because he saw something about Moses. And he began to kill all the little children during that time. Because there's something that he sees. There's a deliverer and there's a generation that is about to be withdrawn from sin and drawn to the power of God. He sees a generation. When Satan looks at you, he just doesn't look at you. He sees a generation. He sees a future. He sees a destiny. And he's trying to stop the destiny. You're wondering, why am I facing all these fears? It's about the destiny. It's about the generation and the future that he's trying to stop. And he tries to stop it by stopping your faith. Stopping your identity. So many of you are confused. You don't know who you are. You're trying to copy this person. You're looking at that person. You're trying to compete with that person. You don't know who you are. But when you begin to know you are, who you are, that is where your power lies. Your strength. It lies in your authenticity. In your power. In your true identity in Christ. And Christ is saying to you, it's not the end. You have failed me, yes. But it's time to get up. It's time to stop crying. It's time to stop complaining and murmuring about your weaknesses. Don't say, I am not able to stand before Pharaoh. I cannot speak. I cannot speak. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Maybe it's your weakness of not being able to speak. You're saying, I cannot stand before Pharaoh. I have a disability in this area of my life. I don't think I'm able to do it. And God is saying, get up. It's not just about sinning, about our weakness. But it's also about the weaknesses that you see in yourself. That maybe don't cause you to sin. But they are causing you to cut off a generation and a destiny that God has for you. You're saying, I don't really think I can sing like Tasha Cobes. But God is calling you to an international ministry. A ministry that releases people from bondages. A deliverance ministry through your voice. Because there's an anointing on your voice. But you compare yourself. I am not like John whom the Lord loves. I am not like this disciple. I'm not like that disciple. I'm not like that woman of God. I'm not like that man of God. Stop it. Stop it. Stop comparing. Stop competing. Stop looking at yourself with condemnation, with doubt, with guilt, with shame, with rejection. Yes, those people rejected you. Yes, those things happened of rejection. It's time to get up and to walk. The authentic walk that God has ordained you to walk in. Because there's a shadow that is an anointing with your name attached to it. There are people that need to be delivered. There's a generation that is waiting for you. So the Lord looked at Peter when he had denied him. And the rooster had crowed three times. The Lord looked at Peter. And I believe if you watch The Passion of Christ, it really depicts... It really shows that scene very well. If you haven't watched The Passion of Christ, I advise you to go and watch it. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Have you been weeping bitterly? Are you weeping bitterly because of what you have done? Let your weeping cause you to be delivered from the lies of Satan. Let your weeping not drown you in sorrows, but let it begin to elevate your faith and say, wait a minute, 
I can get up. I know that the Lord loves me. I can stand up once more. I can walk once more with a victorious and a delivered mindset. It's time for me to get up from weeping. Yes, I've wronged him. It's not to say don't cry. It's okay to cry, but don't keep crying. It's okay to be disappointed about what you have done, but grow from the disappointments. It's okay, but don't feel shamed. Stop allowing guilt to cage you and fears and condemnation. It's time to get up. And we want to pray today because the Lord wants to do a new thing in your life. The Lord is taking you far. There's a future waiting for you. There's a destiny and you can step into that future today by making a choice and making a decision to get up. You can step into what God has for you. You just need to step in by making a decision and saying, I'm going to get up from the pain. I'm going to get up from my weaknesses and my shortcomings, from what my family has done, what people have done around me from the rejection. I'm going to get up from the feelings of feeling inadequate. I'm going to get up from the fear. I'm, I'm going to get out of the situation, this church, these people and these friends that keep condemning me. It's time for me to leave, to change my circle because where I'm going, my destiny needs people that can water me with the word of God, with the true gospel that tells me of who I am. The true gospel that doesn't condemn me. It's time to get up and we want to pray. Let us pray. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you. I thank you for those that are like Peter. I thank you that gone are the days of Simon who was weak. Simon who was condemned. Simon who felt shamed. Simon who felt guilty. And now you're calling the Peters out of the Simon. The Peters who are faithful. The Peters who live by faith and not by sight. The Peters who don't live in guilt and condemnation. The Peters who don't let the worms of shame eat them up to the point where their faith has died. Father, I thank you for these. And they're saying we're ready to step into our futures. We know that our future is bright. We know that we have a calling. We know that we have a place at your table. Lord, you have prepared a table before them in the presence of their enemy who condemned them, the presence of their enemies who guilted them with shame. You have prepared this table before them. And Lord, they're saying we are walking to that table. We are ready to eat the food that belongs to us. We are ready to engage in these dimensions of inheritance, promises, and blessings, which are spiritual. We are ready to experience the reality of the things that you have for us. They are saying we are coming to your table and they are walking to your table even now. They have made the decisions. Father, welcome them. Welcome your people, Holy Spirit of God. Welcome them. Oh Lord, help them to see how much you love them. Oh Lord, even as you ran to the prodigal son, you ran, oh Lord, to meet the prodigal son because you love him. It's not about what he has done, but it's about the future. It's about who he is. He is still your child. She is still your child. Lord, help them to understand how great, how magnificent, how honorable, how precious your personal love for your people is. Help them to experience it, oh God, that their, heart, that their hearts may burst with joy and with new wine. Oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. We speak restoration. I speak restoration. I speak revival. I speak restoration of joy, of peace, of soundness of mind. No more lies of Satan. In the name of Jesus, we choke out the lies of Satan. Let them be choked out of your life and pruned out of your life even now. In the name of Jesus, let them be uprooted from your destiny, from your path. No more thorns on your path. In the name of Jesus, you will walk without difficulty. In the name of Jesus, you will walk without pain and shame. In the name of Jesus, you will fulfill the destiny that God has for you. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, who is present even now, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for your people that are victorious. Thank you, Father, that they will experience the reality of your grace, your power, your love, your glory, your promises, your blessings, which are yes and amen. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. God loves you. So God bless you. And remember, God loves you so much. And I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.